Thank you. Good afternoon. The Senate Committee on Natural Resources will now come to order. Members and presenters, please remember to mute your microphone when you are not speaking. And at this time, we can go ahead and proceed with roll call. So will our secretary please proceed to call, to call the roll? Senator Brooks. Here. Senator Goikechia. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Senator Scheibel. Here. Chair Donate. And I am here. Thank you. So seeing we've reached quorum, we can go ahead and proceed. So welcome everyone to the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. Before we begin, I would like to point out that the committee will be starting with the work session today and then hearing SB 125 last. Now, for anyone who has not participated in these virtual legislative meetings yet, I will go ahead and explain really quick how our virtual committee meetings are being conducted during the 21, 20, 2021 legislative session. As you know, the legislative building right now is closed to the general public, so all committee meetings will be held virtually, meaning that committee members, staff, and everyone else will have to participate either through the Zoom video conference or by telephone. However, there are various ways that members of the public can engage with us and participate throughout this entire process. As in previous sessions, all committee related information is available on the Nevada Electronic Legislative Information System, commonly referred to as NELIS, which is accessible through the legislature's website. There are four ways that you can engage with our committee. And this includes registering to participate in a committee meeting through the NELA system, which places you in line to testify on a bill or provide public comment, submitting written testimony to the committee's email address or fax number listed on the agenda, sharing opinion via the legislature's opinion application on NELIS, or viewing committee meetings online through NELIS or on the legislature's YouTube channel. To testify on a bill or provide public comment during the 2021 legislative session, members of the public must first register for the meeting that you would like to participate in. Committee meetings are listed on NELIS and you simply have to just register and click on the participate button near the meeting time and date. And from there, you will receive the necessary required information to participate, but just know that if you receive that information, it does not guarantee you an ability to speak during the meeting. When you are on the phone line, please pay attention to which bill is being considered. We only have one today, but again, we'll be working on a work session first and BPS will call you by you um, and tell you which keys to press and raise your hand to unmute yourself. EPS staff will call on you to speak by the last three digits of your phone number and detailed instructions can be found on the Nellis, on the help page on Nellis if you need any help or, um, regarding this process. And of course, if you ever need any assistance with any of these documents or processes, or if you'd like to receive more information um, electronically, you can go ahead and contact our committee manager at the committee email listed on the agenda. So with that, we are ready to go ahead and start with the work session. So today we will be holding a work session on three bills. I would like to remind everyone that we will not be taking any testimony at the work session. However, I may call on someone as necessary to answer questions from the committee members should any of them arise. So we are ready and we, are, we will begin with SB 33. Um, our policy analyst, Jennifer Rudy, will be walking us through this work session. So Ms. Rudy, please proceed when you are ready. Thank you, Chair Donate. My name is Jennifer Rudy. I am the committee policy analyst as LCB staff. I neither support nor oppose legislation with that. I will start with Senate Bill 33. Senate Bill 33 expands the type of vegetation and areas where vegetation is located that the state forest or fire warden is responsible for conserving, protecting, and enhancing. The measure expands the purposes for which the state forest or fire warden may distribute conservation plant materials on public and private property to include soil erosion control, noise abatement, revegetation, green strips, reduction of fire hazards, xeriscaping, water conservation, and providing wildlife habitats. The measure adds rangelands to state owned and privately owned lands for which the state forest or fire warden must supervise or coordinate all forestry and watershed work. And, and I should have clarified this is um, a summary of how the bill was introduced. So the language in the bill as introduced. Certain duties would be transferred from the state forest or fire warden to the state fire marshal, including but not limited to the enforcement of all regulations relating to the reduction of brush, dense undergrowth, and other vegetation around and adjacent to a structure that is in a fire hazardous forested area, often referred to as defensible space. 
and provisions requiring fire retardant roofing material in such areas. The um, work session document is up on Nellis for anybody who's watching and, and can't find that. It is up on Nellis, including the amendments. The Division of Forestry submitted the attached amendment on February 11th, 2021, the date that the bill was heard, and the State Fire Marshal testified in support of the bill with the amendment. In addition to the division's amendment, the Senate Committee on Natural Resources is proposing to clarify that the International Wildland Urban Interface Code applies to certain counties in certain situations as noted in the proposed amendment. So both of those amendments are attached to the work session document. So if the um, motion is to amend and do pass, if, if you could just make sure it's clear that that would be both amendments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Jennifer, for that comment. Um, to my committee members, uh, do you have any questions at this time? I'm ready to make a motion if you're ready to take one, Chair. Sure. Uh, go right ahead, Vice Chair Scheifel. I would. I move that we adopt both of the proposed amendments and do pass um, this bill. Great, thank you. Uh, so I have a motion from Vice Chair Scheibel. Um, do I have a second? A second from Brooks. Thank you, Senator Brooks. So the second it has been from Senator Brooks for the record. Um, is there any discussion on the motion at this time? Senator Gorkachia. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I'm still concerned about the language in the bill and just, I, I will support it, but I am concerned. I just wanted to bring it to the front. I am concerned about in those jurisdictions that have no building code in effect, there are some, uh, at least some counties and uh, that really don't have I true zoning or or building codes in effect, I would think. And I, I looks like it's going to be a considerable duty to the state fire marshal to uh, not only warn them that they don't have the clear space, but then uh, in the absence of, of a say, a, a code department, it's going to be up to the fire marshal to enforce this. So I, I'm just concerned about that. Uh, it could be a, a bigger duty than what we really realize. Uh, thank you, thank you, Senator Gokuchia. Uh We actually have the state fire marshal on Zoom. Um, if they would like to go ahead and come forward. I know it's not really a question, but maybe if they have any additional comments that they'd like to uh, go right ahead, sir. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, for the record, uh, State Fire Marshal Mike Bizak, um, uh to answer um, Senator Gokuchia's, uh question, um, I, I don't think it's, as far as, as, as my, my interpretation of this, my jurisdiction, my authorities are limited in 477030 to certain types of facilities. Um, the language in the amendment to simply adopt the WUI that we were doing anyway, the 2018 WUI, and, and I always adopt to the, um, we, we set the base code. The, this still, I, I believe this still falls to the locals to uh, handle that enforcement action um, unless we were we were called in. Uh, ours are four seven seven is real specific as far as hospitals, uh, eating and drinking establishments over fifty, um, group cares, uh, things like that. It uh, it doesn't uh, give us the authority to do things like um, you know. I think I testified to this so to to a Dollar General store or or, or places like that. Um, specifically, unless we're called for by the county, which we've always supported any county that doesn't have, uh, um, uh, they're not deep in the building official, code official uh, um, areas. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to have to, to, to worry about that unless it becomes a local issue. And then we can certainly assist. And um, if it, you know, if it becomes bigger than, than that, I, I don't know that I have the authority to um, to impose anything or to to handle uh, enforcement on anything outside of what NRS four seven seven zero three zero allows me to. Did that answer your question, or I'll, any other questions or follow ups? I appreciate that, uh, Mike. But uh, you know, in in section three sub three. 
It says the fire marshal is responsible for the enforcement of the provisions of subsection one in all areas of the state in which there is no building code in effect. And, and there are areas in this state that some of the rural counties don't have building codes in effect. And I'm, I'm just concerned if I'm just reading the statute. Uh, I know it says it, you know, the special note says enforcement of the code is at the local government's fire protection level, not the state. But again, if they don't have a code, what happens? Uh, the I, I to the uh, senator uh, again, Mike Dzak for the record. Um, I, I, I I understand your your concerns. I I don't know. This is something I, I don't know how much is out there. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, how, how big an issue this uh, actually would be. I don't know how much in those rural counties without that are, are building into the wildland urban interface. And um, um, there's, there's, uh, there were studies done and what's considered the wooey. And I, I, I still think that um, at least on a county level, it's, it's, it's better to, to have it at that local level to say for Dayton, uh, for Lyon County, it's, uh, we consider these areas the the um, the uh, wildland urban interface, and in Douglas County is something entirely different. And I think that's best left to them. And uh, by the adoption of the WUI, it gives them the guidance and the ability to do that. And, I, and if, if it came to that, uh, the statute allows us to go and, and, and assist. And um, it, you, you certainly could be right, sir. It could be a, a bigger thing than. Uh, we 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 uh, we were looking at, but um, I, I, on on its cover, I, I don't I don't see it. Thank you, I appreciate that, and thank you, Mr. Chair. And again, I support the measure. I'm just uh, I'm just concerned that down the road, if it gets to a finger pointing contest, that it could be a problem. So thank you, and I will support the bill. Thank you, Senator Gokichia. Um Are there any other comments or questions before we proceed to the roll call vote? Seeing none, um, okay. Uh, will the secretary please go ahead and proceed to take the roll call vote at this time? Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goikachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Chair Donate? And I am a yes. Thank you. So with that, the motion carries. Um, would, with by a raise of hand, would anyone like to volunteer to do the fourth statement? If not, I, oh, okay. Vice Chair Scheibel, I will go ahead and assign this to you. Thank you for volunteering. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and proceed with the next bill. Um, Ms. Rudy, please proceed with SB 43 and your presentation when you are ready. Thank you, Chair Donyate. This is Jennifer Reedy, Committee Policy Analyst. Senate Bill 43 expands the membership of the Advisory Board on Outdoor Recreation from 11 voting members to 12 voting members and two non-voting members, so expands it by three members. The members added would be the, and this is according to the bill as introduced, the Executive Director of the Nevada Association of Counties as a voting member, a representative of the United States Department of the Interior as a non-voting member and a representative of the U.S. Department of Agriculture as a non-voting member. Um, you'll recall that the 2019 legislature created the Division of Outdoor Recreation and the Advisory Board on Outdoor Recreation in um, with the enactment of AB 486. Uh, the amendment that was proposed is attached and it was proposed by the Division of Outdoor Recreation at the bill hearing. And it is changing the language for that one additional voting member. So it would not be the executive director of NACO. Instead, it would be one member appointed by the governor from a nomination submitted by the board of directors of the Nevada Association of Counties who resides in a county whose population is less than 100,000 and has professional expertise or possess demonstrated knowledge in outdoor recreation, natural resources management, and economic development in Nevada. 
And in the process of uh, drafting this amendment, the um, the four little words or its successor organization that were in the bill as introduced were uh, deleted with this amendment language. So the second amendment for consideration by the committee is just to add that back in. So if for some reason the Nevada Association of Counties isn't around, it would be or its successor organization, which is kind of standard language in a lot of um, the statutes. And I should point out, NACO did say that they've been around for 100 years. They don't have any plans of going away, but um, they were fine with adding that language or its successor organization. So there are two amendments. And um, so any motion to amend and do pass, it would just need to be clear that it would be both of those amendments. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, committee members, do you have any other questions at this time? Uh, seeing none. Sorry, I, I do have oh. a question. Vice Chair Scheibel, yep. Sorry, I'm looking at the work session document and I see an amendment proposed submitted by the Division of Outdoor Recreation and I don't see another amendment. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Rudy, can you clarify that? Thank you, um, Chair Donate. This is Jennifer Rudy. So there is not a separate hard copy of the second amendment. The second amendment is only adding the language. So on the work session document main page under amendments, it says it is adding the language or its successor organization. Got so it. I'm sorry, I didn't want to go ahead and do a whole separate page, nope. but it's basically adding those words to the amendment submitted by the division. Okay, that makes sense. Now I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, do we have any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, I will un go ahead and entertain a motion to amend and do pass with the two amendments that have been presented forward. So moved, Senator uh, Scheibel. Vice Chair Scheibel, uh, thank you for that for the record. Um, and do I have a second? Second, Brooks. Seconded by Senator Brooks, thank you for the record. Um, is there any discussion regarding this motion or any thoughts? Seeing none, we can go ahead and proceed uh, with the roll call vote. So will the secretary please call the roll call vote? Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goikachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Sen Chair Donate? And I am a yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I can go ahead and take this floor statement. All right, uh, and last but not least, Ms. Rudy, uh, please per proceed to present um, with SB 53 when you are ready. Thank you, Chair Donate. This is Jennifer Rudy again, Committee Policy Analyst. Senate Bill 53 authorizes the Administrator of the Division of State Parks to organize the areas under the jurisdiction of the division into regions and to use any fees collected at each area for certain purposes at any area within the region in which the money was collected. The authorized use of such fees is expanded to include the repair, operation, and maintenance of communication systems. The measure further expands the authorization to collect such fees at any area under the jurisdiction of the division, instead of only at state parks, potentially including monuments and recreation areas. There were no proposed amendments for Senate Bill 53. I did, however, attach the map of the four regions to be created. Uh, that was requested at the hearing, and the, uh, the division submitted that following the hearing. So I just want to make sure you all saw that, and it was up on Nellis. So if there are any questions, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rudy, uh, for that presentation. Um, committee members, do you have any questions regarding this? No the session, Mr. Chair, I would move to do pass. Thank you, Mr. Senator Chair, Gorky. I would, I would uh, second that motion. Thank you, sir. So for the record, uh, Senator Gorkachia went ahead and uh, uh, did the motion to do pass, and then Senator Hansen um, was the one that seconded. Do I have any questions from any of the committee members? Seeing none, uh, let's go ahead and proceed. Will the secretary please call the roll call vote? 
Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goykachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Chair Donate? And I am a yes, so the motion carries. Um, would anyone by a raise of hand like to volunteer for the floor statement? Senator Hansen, you got it. Thank you, sir, for your volunteer. Okay, uh, so the floor assignment, the floor statement has been assigned to Senator Hansen, uh, and thank you to my committee members for your comments and questions. At this time, uh, we can go ahead and proceed with Senate Bill 125. So now if Senator Settlemeyer is, I think he is with us. So this measure revises provisions relating to falconry. Um, will the bill presenter, Senator Settlemeyer, please proceed when you are ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to testify on this bill today. Uh, in my hand, I'm trying to hold, I don't know if anybody can even see it, it is a coin from Governor Mike O'Callaghan. I believe it was from a 74 campaign. What does that have to do with falconry, you may ask? It's interesting that Mike O'Callaghan actually had at the governor's mansion a red-tailed hawk, and he was actually a falconer. In that respect, a hat tip to Senator Dr. Hardy for giving me that piece of trivia. Uh, in that respect, this is actually my second bill dealing with falconry. Uh, that being said, I got involved in the concept because some gentlemen were actually on my property recovering a falcon that had gotten hurt, and they nursed it back to health. In that respect, they were falconers, and they actually come hunting on my property occasionally. I let them. It's fascinating to see someone uh, hunt with a falcon. I, I think that's truly... Uh, gives them a lot of kudos in that respect. And it's also fascinating because as they explain it to me, they themselves are actually the hunting dog. It is the falconer's job to jump in the ditch to scare up the duck. And then they wait for the bird to do the hunting. And then they need to retrieve it before the bird gorges himself by potentially eating too much. So in that respect, I always thought that was kind of interesting. Also another interesting aspect about falconry, it's in the wild. Most of these birds of prey, 90% of them die in the first year versus their second year, they lose another half of them. Uh, while in captivity, they're allowed to train these birds and most of them are turned back in the wild after time. And so it's fascinating to me how the, the sport has started up and has continued for all the eons that it has. I mean, since the dawn of time, there's falconry. So in that respect, I'm very helpful trying to help these guys in that. Um, part of this came about as the falconers not only have falcons, they also have owls, hawks, and things of that nature. But currently, under Nevada law, they're prohibited from having any form of an eagle. And they're, of course, looking at the concept of this bill to have the potential to acquire golden eagles for falconry purposes. And in that respect, that is what is before us within Senate Bill 125, uh, language put together by the falconry industry. Uh, in that respect, there were some disagreements. However, in discussions with the Nevada Department of Wildlife, they have come forward with an amendment, which if it's acceptable to the chair, we would just work off of that amendment. And the amendment is fairly simple. It just states that the commission would adopt regulations that provide for a person who is a master falconer by the department to possess a golden eagle for the eagle for the purposes of rehabilitation and other certain circumstances, provided that he or she meets the conditions outlined by federal law. And in that respect, it's fascinating to know that most of these falconers, in my opinion, have given up a lot of their own personal rights to have these birds because the Department of Wildlife and the federal government have the right to come on their premises and search their property at any time to make sure that these birds are being kept properly. So in that respect, that's the, the gist of what the bill is at this point in time with the amendment. It is basically just allowing endow the authorization to allow for the uh, golden eagles and falconry. However, they would develop all the administrative code to and regulations for this. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I can answer questions at this time, or if you wish, Mr. Wasley, I believe, is here, or Ms. Newmark, to discuss the concept of the amendment. Thank you, Settle, uh, Senator Settlemeyer. Um, if, uh, Ms. Director Wasley, if you have any comments, um, feel, please feel free to proceed. Thank you, Senator Settlemeyer, Chair Donate, Tony Wasley, Department of Wildlife, for the record. Um, I think the Senator captured it extremely well. Uh, there are some 
uh, circumstances that the department views as a uh, very legitimate possession of golden eagles, for example, um, rehabilitated eagles can be temporarily homed by uh, falconers. Uh, there's also a federal lottery system that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife administers and in providing an opportunity to be in possession of golden eagles. However, a current statute in Nevada prohibits either of those instances. Um, and so uh, we, we've offered uh, some of that language that um, Senator Settlemeyer referenced that could allow for possession of golden eagles in Nevada. And Diversity Division Administrator um, Jennifer Newmark is, is here um, to perhaps speak to some of the specifics in, in that amendment. Uh, Chair Donate, if, if that's your desire, or we can simply stand for questions. Thank you, Director Walsley. Um, Senator Settlemeyer, uh, stay tuned. Uh, do any of my committee members have any questions for Senator, Senator Settlemeyer at this time? Vice Chair Scheibel, go for it. Thank you. Um, and I, I would be happy to get an answer from Endow or from Senator Settlemeyer about this. Um, the other certain circumstances described in the amendment, would that include that lottery system for taking a certain number of golden or bald eagles per year? This is Senator Settlement. I don't believe it's lawful to actually have bald eagles. I think there's a federal law of prohibition against that. This is mainly, I believe, just for the concept for the golden eagles, to my knowledge. And so as far as the rest of that, that would be up to Mr. Wosley and Endow, whether or not they wanted to entertain that through their regulatory process. But I'll allow Mr. Wosley, of course, to uh, put forth his comment. Thank you, thank you Senator Settlemeyer, and, and thank you, Vice Chair Scheibel. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the other circumstances, certainly, um, you know, the lawful possession of birds as uh, potentially obtained through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, lottery. Um, <clears throat> there was also uh, an expressed desire by some of the falconers to um, be allowed to be in possession of a bird. For example, if they had a bird into their care and moved to Nevada, for example, um, would like to be able to, to bring that animal with them. So the circumstances um, you know, could vary significantly. It's our desire just to have some awareness and, and turn that over to the rulemaking process within the Wildlife Commission so that there is some oversight and awareness of, of possession of, of eagles in Nevada. May I have a follow-up, Mr. Chair? Um, would this prohibit the commercial trade of golden eagles or would that still be precluded by federal law, um, that's my main concern. Yeah, Vice Chair Scheibel, Tony Wassley for the record. Um, that would be a concern, of course, that the department would share. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that I'm equipped to answer that. I'm unaware um, of any commercial trade that exists for Eagles. I believe that um, is a prohibited activity as it currently stands, but I would certainly invite uh, Wildlife Diversity Division Administrator, Ms. Newmark, to speak to that if she's able. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jennifer Newmark. I'm Wildlife Diversity Division Administrator for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Um, currently, under the federal laws, the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act and the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, um, these two species are protected. Um, these federal laws allow possession of golden eagles under certain circumstances. For example, through the National Depredation Lottery Program, they offer six golden eagles a year through a lottery system to be used for falconry purposes. Um, and then, uh, and there's no provision under that act for bald eagles to be used in falconry. So I hope that answers your question, but if I can clarify, please let me know. Uh, that does help. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions from any other committee members at this time? Senator Gokachia. Yes, I, 
uh, that piqued my interest, Ms. Newmark, in, in your statement then. So you're saying there's up to six golden eagles that could be acquired through the federal lottery. Uh, so then if, if a person wanted to be a, uh, it, who is a, a falconer, and I see under federal law, you can possess up to three of the uh, three eagles, uh, then would that be the only place you could access one? I mean, where, and again, back to Vice Chair Scheibel's question, Okay, let's hope there's not a trade in these. So how would you access uh, an eagle you want to do? Uh, if apply for the license, you clearly met the requirements of the CFRs. How do you get the eagle? Thank you for the question. Again, this is Jennifer Newmark, Nevada Department of Wildlife. So um, a couple of ways that eagles can be obtained for, um, for falconry purposes is through that uh, lottery program where there are six eagles. A fal this is a national program, so a falconer could apply for one of those, um, those lottery spots essentially, and if they were lucky enough to draw the tag, then they could go and get an eagle through that way. Another um, situation where falconers could have golden eagles in their possession is through rehabbing facilities. Um, oftentimes when a young eagle uh, is, comes into a rehabbing situation, a falconer could play a really important role in helping to train that eagle to fly and hunt and be returned to the wild. And in those situations, that would be an opportunity for a falconer to um, have an eagle in their possession. does sound like it would be a fairly limited market then at that point. Correct. Thank you, Senator Gorgachia. Uh, do I have any other comments? Uh, Senator Brooks, go for it. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, th this might be a question for legal, but uh, why does this require a two thirds majority? I don't see any new fees or additional fees, is it just because we're adding another thing that could get a fee? If I could, uh, Chairman, this is Senator Settlemeyer. Go for it. In that respect, what traditionally occurs within legal, at least they've told me in the past, is that by doing something new, by roping in potentially if you create a lasso and you increase the size of that lasso to bring in a group who previously was not licensed, that new group triggers the two thirds. And since these individuals would have to apply through Endow and pay the fees through Endow for the right to uh, have said animal, that would require that per se registration triggers the two thirds quota, if I am correct. Of course, legal is always more than welcome to can't, uh, correct me at any time. Uh, Ms. Rudy, do you have any comments that you'd like to address at this time? Thank you. This is Jennifer Rudy, committee policy analyst, not the committee council, but uh, the committee council, as you know, have been pulled off the committees to be drafting bills. But I believe we're, we're communicating with the committee council and he says yes, that they are expanding the applicability of the existing fee in section two. So actually Senator Sandelmeyer did a great job answering that question. So thank you for standing in. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Rudy. Uh, Senator Brooks, do you have any other questions? No, no. Thank you, Mr. Rudy. Thank you, Senator Settlemeyer. That was a good explanation. Thank you. Uh, any other questions at this time? Uh, Senator Settlemeyer, um, my question would be, um, how, how did this bill come to fruition? I'm aware that you probably have other presenters that you'd like to yield the floor, so I'm interested in hearing how that. Uh, this, this Senator Settlemeyer, thank you, Chairman, for that question. Again, the bill came about. I have individuals who actually come out of my ranch and hunt with their falcons. And it's always been a fascinating thing to watch. Uh, again, the concept of someone out and hunting with a gun, I mean, that can be difficult at times, but to actually hunt with a falcon. Um, and then to hear their discussions about how, as it was mentioned previous here by Ms. Newmark, that you know, there's a lot of birds that die in the wild. And a lot of times these falconers actually rehab these animals and turn them back to the wild. And in the meantime, help them, they teach them how to hunt better. Because uh, in the wild, as you know, if you hunt and you don't survive, uh, don't exactly get your prey the first time, your chances of dying are pretty well. Uh, versus if a falconer, if they fail, they take them home, give them a little bit of you know, nutrition and take them out and try again the next day. Uh, kind of like uh, I did, my daughter just got her driver's license and luckily uh, we are all there to help our children at times get by because the first time hopping a car wouldn't go real well without a little instruction.
Thank you, Senator Sennelmeyer. Um, do you have any other additional pre presenters that you would like to be recognized before we go ahead and move to the phone lines? I believe potentially there are people on the phone that are supportive that are the Falconers that I've dealt with, but no, no one official uh, currently inside the process at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, we will go ahead and proceed forward. So as a reminder, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more comprehensive testimony in writing. Uh, BPS, is there anyone on the line right now who would like to provide support testimony for SB 125? Thank you, Chair. To testify in support on Senate Bill 125, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Well, this is the first time I've ever done this. So is this for the public or no? Caller with the last three digits, 941. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hi, this is Zach Conine, Z-A-C-H-C-O-N-I-N-E. I'm uh, calling today in support of the bill, not as your Nevada State Treasurer, uh, but as a citizen, my first job at the ripe age of 15 was helping uh, birds of prey at the Hudson Valley Raptor Center, and we worked very closely with falconers who would make sure that those birds could get back to the wild. It taught me a lot, and I really want to thank Senator Sotomayor for bringing this bill forward. Uh, we have something like this uh, back in the day in New York, and it helped a lot of eagles. So thank you, Senator, and thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. As a reminder, we are currently on support on Senate Bill 125. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in support at this time. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I do have two falconers that did were able to get onto the Zoom. I didn't know if it would be acceptable to allow them to testify at this time. Uh, thank you, Senator Sennelmeyer. Uh, yeah, my understanding was that they were part of the presentation group. So, uh, Mr. Dalton, if you would like to go ahead and proceed. Uh, yes, first, uh, for the record, my name is Corey Dalton. Uh, I'm a licensed master falconer in Nevada. And I just wanted to say that um, we've worked really hard with uh, Senator Settlemeyer as well as uh, Department of Wildlife over the years. And we're really hoping to move forward with this so that we can uh, be part of conservation efforts to help get golden eagles uh, you know, back out to the wild that are in some sort of distress of some kind that just need rehabilitation. There's just not enough uh, eagle falconers out there to take in uh, the golden eagles that are injured across the, the United States uh, so that we can uh, provide those services. And uh, this bill, um, we believe, will work very well for us to work with NDOW to come up with criteria as well as um, application process and, and qualifications to do that. And I just want to thank everybody for all their hard work on all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Uh, and then I believe we have Mr. Uh, Lou Souter. So whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Yep. You're good. All right. Yeah. My, uh, for the record, my name is Lou Souter, and I am here to support Nevada Falconers, and I am in favor of the Eagle uh, Bill moving forward. Uh, one of the things I just want to point out is uh, uh, the way Senator Sennelmeyer said that, you know, in their first year, about approximately 80 percent of the birds that hatch that spring do not make it the first year. Well, a lot of those eagles that struggle their first year are part of that rehab program. Uh, and also, uh, even adult eagles of breeding age uh, become part of the rehab eagle program. So it really does... Uh, it's, it really is good conservation. So uh, I really do appreciate everybody's work and trying to get this bill passed forward and I'd like to say thank you. 
Thank you, sir, for your comment. Uh, BPS, is there anyone on the line right now that would like to provide uh, support testimony before we move to oppos uh, opposition? Thank you, Chair. As a reminder, we are currently on support testimony for Senate Bill 125. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in support at this time. Thank you. Uh, BPS, is there anyone wishing to provide testimony in opposition to SB 125? Thank you, Chair. We are on opposition testimony on Senate Bill 125. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in opposition, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 792. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. This is Patrick Donnelly, P-A-T-R-I-C-K-D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. I'm Nevada State Director with the Center for Biological Diversity. Um, just wanted to uh, reiterate some points made in our written testimony that uh, we support uh, falconry for rehabilitation purposes, um, but we do not support taking eagles out of the wild. And what we heard before about the depredation permits and the, the lottery of permits that Fish and Wildlife Service does, that's what that's for. That's for, for taking golden eagles out of the wild. And, um, you know, Nevada is a place of refuge for the golden eagle in our wide open spaces. And, uh, you know, I, I think what we need in this state is not to be taking golden eagles out of the wild. So we proposed a amendment to add another point to the bill um, prohibiting NDAO from issuing depredation permits for uh, working with Fish and Wildlife Service on these depredation permits. Uh, so we would encourage that amendment. Um, again, support the idea of rehabilitating golden eagles in the state of Nevada, but not to take them out of the wild. Thank you very much. As a reminder, we are currently on opposition testimony on Senate Bill 125. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in opposition, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in opposition at this time. Thank you, BPS. Uh, and last but not least, is there anyone wishing to provide testimony um, in neutral for this bill? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Senate Bill 125, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Uh, let's give it a few more seconds just because I know that there's been a lag. So. Certainly. Thank you, Chair. Standing by. We are currently on neutral testimony on Senate Bill 125. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in neutral, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no more callers in neutral at this time. Thank you, VPS. Uh, Senator Settlemeyer, do you have any last minute remarks that you'd like to mention? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, sometimes it takes a while to get done mute. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to provide this bill today. I hope I can answer any additional questions or information that any of the members want. I'll reach out to them individually and get back to you once I have an idea how they feel about it, Chairman, so that way you can do what you wish. Uh, in that respect, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. 
And I was originally hoped to try to bring in some falcons and things of this sort into the building. Unfortunately, uh, being closed off, we didn't have that ability. And I appreciate, again, the opportunity to present. Thank you. Thank you, Sen Senator Settlemeyer, for that. Um, thank you to the presenters and everyone who participated for your time today. Uh, I do want to mention that the opinion poll for SB 125 was um, public, and we did receive uh, uh, the last time I checked, it was uh, 10 remarks in opposition. So uh, we will go ahead and continue to monitor any correspondence that is received um, within the next few days, and we will try our best to reflect it on the meeting minutes. Um, I do want to address offline and mention uh, that there's been a question about the degradation from another amendment that was proposed. So I'll, I'll work offline um, with Senator Settlemeyer to see if we can discuss that further. But for now, I will go ahead and close the hearing on SB 125. And again, as a reminder, the committee will not be taking an action on SB 125 today, It may, but it may bring it back um, for a future work session, just like our other bills. So at this time, uh, we can go ahead and proceed with public comment. I will now go ahead and call for public comment. Please remember to mute, uh, to limit your comments to two minutes. Uh, BPS staff, is there anyone on waiting for public comment at this time? Thank you so much, Chair. We are currently on public comment. If you have recently joined the call and would like to provide public comment, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, the public line is open and working, and there are no callers at this time. Great, thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, members, are there any comments or concerns before we proceed with the journey? Seeing none, uh, okay. Thank you all for the productivity and for your collaboration. Our next meeting is on Tuesday, March 9th at 3.30 p.m. And uh, just a reminder that the committee meeting is canceled for this Thursday. So I now declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you.